guys, it's Kim and this is the Crafty Nomad and I am back again for um, episode number 34 of the Crafty Nomad podcast. Thank you so much for joining me. And today I actually have worked out a few show, show notes to keep me a little bit on track here. Uh, I have a little bit of, let's see, what do I have? I have no finished objects. <laughs> I have, uh, let's see, four whips to talk about and uh, future plans and um, I didn't bring over my mixed media whip so we will show them another time and I'm going to do a little bit of haul from Michaels and Joann's. And then I'm going to shout out a couple of uh, crochet podcasts uh, that I checked out in the last few weeks. And um, I'm going to share if I brought it. I think I brought it. Um, oh, yeah, I did. I brought uh, a magazine to share with you guys as well. So let's get started. I just wanted to say welcome to everybody who has uh, is trying me out, checking me out for the first time. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for spending some of your time with me. Um, again, I'm Kim the Crafty Nomad because I'm all over the place when it comes to my crafting. So on this channel, you will see all kinds of things. And um, I crochet a lot. I knit. I do mixed media art. Uh, I sometimes scrapbook. I do a little bit of heat pressing with vinyl and you will see that on some upcoming uh, projects that I have planned down the line. And I also am a uh, Etsy shop owner and where I, uh, I have an Etsy shop called Ebony Pearl Creative uh, Creations by Kim. And uh, on that shop you will find mostly project bags, uh, but soon and very soon hopefully some crafty art for you guys and um yeah so that's what you would find on my my um etsy shop i am pettis kim knits on ravelry and you can find me on instagram at kim the crafty nomad please come and follow me i am 15 people away from a thousand followers on um instagram so go on over there and follow me if you don't already do so and in addition, I am just, I'm sure I'm like 125 short of 500 here on YouTube. And I really want to make it to a thousand this year. But the first step toward that is going to be 500. So if you are stopping by for this first time and you like what you see, please like, um, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel by hitting that subscribe button. I would really, really appreciate it. And um, yeah. Yeah. So let's start with my whips. Um, I'm going to start out with my socks. And last time I was just turning the heel. And now uh, I, am, I have them housed in my uh, Crafty Octopus bag. And um, the yarn, if I can find a label, which I'm a bad podcaster, guys, and I don't have the label, but... It's Berger de France. It's I got it from loveknitting.com and it's the Gumi um um uh what is that? Base, I guess you would call it Gumi. It's 75% uh superwash merino wool and 25% nylon if I remember correctly. And this colorway is called Beige Prince. And if you could tell the heel is turned. I have finished the gusset. If you could see that, let me see if I can lean in. If you could see that, that gusset is completely done. And now I'm just going for the foot. And I, I have a pretty, <laughs> a pretty big foot. So uh, it'll be a while on that one. And as you guys know, this is the second the second sock so I'm almost I'm, I'm getting there guys so that's one of my whips and this was my Christmas Eve cast on <laughs> let's hope I finish this thing before June 
uh, my Christmas Eve cast on that I was that I tried to do along with uh, Danny from Little Bobbin's Knits, and I'm still trying to make it work, y'all. So there you go. And then my second whip that I want to show you that you've seen before, because my other two you actually haven't seen before. Um, this is in my one of my my project bags that I made. Um, one of my blanket bags, a pretty elephant print with a pink, solid pink lining. And this is housing my scrappy granny stitch, uh, granny stripe blanket. So last time you guys saw this beast, this girl is a beast. She was, I was, had just done this color, I believe. No. Nope. I had done the orange, so I had done the white, the multicolored blue, and then I think I had done the orange. And since then, I have done the pink, and I did a gray, and now I'm doing like a multicolor, like almost like a camouflage print. So that's where she's at. She is beast, as you can see. <laughs> Can't even handle her, but. Uh, She's going to be more than king size when she's done. And that's folded like four times, I think. So that is my granny stripe blanket. And I'm using a pattern from Lucy over at Attic 24, um, the blog. And she does beautiful, beautiful uh, things over there. So check her out. This is a, a free pattern. But, I mean, you could find a granny stripe uh, for free all over Ravelry, but I just happen to be using the one from Lucy at Attic24. So that's that one. I'm going to try to get it pushed back down in this bag. And that's all the yarns are all types of acrylic yarns, um, whether it's Red Heart or it's mostly probably Red Heart or Craft Smart. But anyway, it's going to last forever, guys. So that's that one. And then the next two are whips that. I don't think I worked on, but if you, I mean, I mean, I don't think you've seen them before. But if you follow me on Instagram, you saw me post last week on Friday, not yesterday, but a week ago. I had all these Downton Abbey yarns out, and I took a picture of them, and I said, I'm trying to figure out what to get into. So I went up and down and around, and I'll tell you about some of those missteps that I took. And I finally landed on two different shawls. Now this one is going to be made out of, this is a Downton Abbey yarn. And this is the Lady Sybil base. It's 80% acrylic and 10% mohair and 10% polyamide. This one is in the colorway um, Blue Mist. And all the colors were inspired by the lovely, lovely series Downton Abbey, which I absolutely love. And I'm uh, so sad that it's gone off. But uh, this, ba this color was called uh, Stone Blue. And then the other color, which I don't have the band for, but I've already finished that portion, is um, gold gray. I just pulled it accidentally. Okay. So the pattern that I landed on for this is called um, Ostaco Terrace by Kel Kelburn Woolens. I got it off of their website, and it's free. And really, all it is is just a, a simple... Uh, crochet uh, triangle shawl and I'm gonna do three colors so I already did the gold gray which is the dark this is the uh, stone blue and then the last color will be um, will be uh, the blue mist so what um, yeah this is a, a simple simple crochet shawl I don't know if it's gonna be a gift or something I keep for myself but because I might keep it for myself, what I did was um, I did the dark at the top. Really, on the pattern, they did light to dark. I'm doing dark to light because I know me, and I know me with light, and I wear makeup, 
and this is going to do much, much better <laughs> up around here than a lighter color. So that's that one. And this is considered a number two uh, weight, fine weight. And I am using a five millimeter hook on that. It's giving me a really nice drape. And I'm keeping this in one of my bags that I made. And I wanted to make it where you could like change out and write what you did on your project. But this, this did not work well because it's just erasing. The other pen I used was hard to erase from here. And then one I just used, a, a chalk marker I used this time, is just erasing off without me barely touching it. So I got to find a better plan. So this actually is not a, I had sold one of these and I had some more of these in my shop. But until I figure this out, I won't uh, make these much anymore. So there you go. But it's cool because I was able to record that I started this on 513, which was last weekend. I put down the name of the yarn and I put down the name of the colors that I use. So there you go. And this little bag is, like I said, with the, the chalk cloth plus a small little sheepy print. So that's that. And then this one. It's also in a bag I made in a size I don't sell. This was an experiment. I was trying to figure out how to do the rounded bottom. And anyway, I decided to, it, because it's completely imperfect, that this will be a bag for me. I would not sell it. And so, in it is, I had some other colors for the Downton Abbey. Um, I had, and it's all Lady Sybil. But this color is called Cloud Paper, which I think is really a cute color because it's like a creamy color. And then this one, let's see which color this is. So that was the gold gray. Oh boy, let's see if I can. I have to look up the colorways, but. So I forgot. Uh, I can't think of the name of this color, and I think I threw away the band, but it's like a purple. What was that color? Something plum, and this one is called pearl pink, and you can barely see that. Anyway, I landed on a different shawl, and this pattern, I'm going to have to link it, put it down below, but this is also another crochet shawl. It's going to be three colors, and this time I did do the light. I am doing the light to dark, and I'm starting with the pearl pink. And then I'll add in the, uh, the purpley color and then finally the rest of the gold gray. And I'm using on this a 4.5 millimeter hook. And I'm going to try to see if I can get in and let you see this pattern. This is by Kim Guzman. And if you know anything about Tunisian crochet, you know Kim Guzman. A lot of the crochet tutorials on YouTube are from her for... Um, Tunisian, but this is not Tunisian. This is just one of her, her regular patterns, her regular crochet patterns, and it's free on her site, and I will link it down below, but uh, it's going to be really cute in the three colors. So that will be my fourth and final whip that I will talk about today. We all know I got plenty more, but those are the ones I'll talk about. Uh, okay, so that's all of my work. Now let's talk about planning. I really, let me show you what I really, 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 really want to make. I discovered a few, um, or rediscovered a few uh, crochet podcasts. One is uh, Sandra uh, of Cherry Heart Designs, and she does beautiful things. And she mentioned um, a crochet along that she was doing with another lady whose name I can't remember right now. Anyway, they were doing this. Let me show you if I can get it up there. It is the Hotel of Bees shawl. And it is a beautiful, beautiful shawl. It's by Christina Hattering. And if you could, I don't know, I hope you can see that. It is a beautiful, beautiful shawl. And I just saw so many people joining in on the crochet along. I came like two and a half weeks too late. They started it, I think, on April 1st. Or they started it on April 15th. 
and it ends on the 31st. So I'm never going to finish. Um, this is something that I did attempt with the Downton Abbey um, yarns. So I thought it was going to work out well. But I'll show you what happened. I don't like the way the fabric looked in this particular yarn. So on this, I was using the purpley color and the pink color. And each section has something to do with bees. And it's so pretty. But if, let me see if I can show you. This is the first section and this bottom rep represents wings. And you do that a few different times. The problem is it's an asymmetrical shawl. So one side, as you can see, is slanty. And it's supposed to be slanty, if you can see that. But this side is also slanting when it should be going, it should be going straight. And so I, plus the Downton Abbey Lady Sybil yarn has a halo because of, and it's a really pretty halo because of the mohair. However, I really just don't think it suits this shawl. So I abandoned that project. Not forever, but just to try a different yarn with no halo. And I'll show you what I came up with when I go through my stash. So that's in my future plans. I just got startitis, and I just want to crochet all the shawls all of a sudden. So I'm going to have the whole tail of bees because it's so beautifully intricate. And it's going to be fun to watch that come together. So I have the whole tail of bees. I picked uh, another yarn for that, and I'll show you in a second. I have that coming up. Because I'm doing the Downton Abbey yarn, I also want to make a Downton Abbey bag, which I have fabric for that I bought a long time ago and um, forgot to, uh, I forgot I had. So I'm going to make a Downton Abbey bag so I can use with, and I will transfer my projects that, I, that are on the Downton Abbey yarn to the Downton Abbey bag. So uh, that's future planning. Uh, let's see. I think those are my only future plans. And then I'm going to go on and I'm going to just say that I'm going to talk about this magazine. I got this magazine, excuse me, on Mother's Day. And uh, Mother's Day was fabulous. I got great gifts. I don't know if you can see behind me on this side. Uh, this white thing right there, right behind me, <laughs> this right here <laughs> is uh, one of those Fuji Instax cameras, uh, just the, the Instamatic type of camera. And I got that. I got some lovely, lovely things for my son. Um, I thought I brought, at least, oh yeah, I did. I wanted to show you what he made for me and uh excuse all the junk on the table but he made it i think in art class so this he's gotta love kids i got that for mother's day so cute and then he made me a necklace which i wore on mother's day and i have it hanging up um in another room but <laughs> can you look at that Happy Mother's Day. And that's me and him. He drew and it's so precious. I plan to laminate this and keep it. So I got that. We went out to a lovely sort of a late lunch after church. And I thoroughly enjoyed myself. Oops, sorry about that. I thoroughly enjoyed myself. And I hope if the mic is working, that probably was really loud. And I'm super sorry if I just made a really loud noise with the mic. Anyway, um, <clears throat> loved my lunch, and I just want to say once again, just a little shout out to Whole30. The lunch that I had included dessert, and I was like, this is going to be my cheat day because it's Mother's Day. So the dinner came with a lovely little, little tiny um, coconut bread pudding. And I had a cup of coffee and had two little pieces of chocolate with it. And I was going to enjoy it. And the truth is, I probably ate a little more than a third of it. 
and I was done. So I'm telling you guys, Whole30 works. If you have a raging, raging sugar, uh, sugar, uh, <laughs> sweet tooth, uh, do Whole30, if only to break your sugar cravings. It really does work. Okay, so back up to what else I did on Mother's Day. I like going to Barnes & Noble, A, because it's the only, you know, brick and mortar bookstore um, chain that's still alive around here. And uh, B, because I really love to go to the periodical section and look at all the crafty magazines. And I really love the English ones, the European crochet magazines, because it just seems like, whereas knitting seems to be the dominant yarny craft in America, it seems like in Europe there's a lot of women who crochet. A lot of women who do crochet design and I just love a lot of the a lot of the podcasts I watch uh, for crochet specifically are uh, European women, English women usually. So I usually go and I usually see their crochet magazines and I don't buy them because of course they're like double the price um, that they would be because they're from Europe. But I was like, it's Mother's Day, so I'm going to get one. So I got Simply Crochet. And I love this magazine. It's like one of those magazines that I just want to read through. I don't want to just page and look at the um, patterns. I want to read through and look at everything in here. So that's what I've been doing. And I've really been enjoying it. And I do see a lot of patterns that I want to try. So I'm excited about this i'm excited about this magazine and the cool thing is they always come with a gift so look it came with a tunisian crochet hook always these magazines because they are usually packaged in plastic so you can't really thumb through them and they come just like this but wrapped in plastic and they have different all of them, even the cross stitch ones, they all have a free gift in there, which I think is really, really cool. So, I'm really enjoying, um, I'm glad I, I thought that was my husband, but that is the neighbors coming in. So, anyway, I really am looking forward to seeing what else is going on. I've only gotten through the first part, but I'm so excited about it. And... I think that I'm just going to take the plunge. I mean, it's only twice as much. So really it was it was 12.99 US, 13.99 um Canada. If I was in in the UK, it would have been 4.99 4.99 pounds. So 5 pounds for this. So which is not really that much, but anyway, I liked it enough that I'm thinking I'm just going to be getting that every month. <laughs> I'm just going to stop at uh, Barnes & Noble once a month and grab it because I really enjoy it. <sighs> so let's go on now to, um, I think I'm ready for hauls, okay? So I got a lot of stuff over the last two weeks and um, all different crafty related things and um a lot of it i'm sorry for bending over some of it will be um mixed media art stuff and there will be yarn and there will be uh yeah so let's get started what did i get so i ordered because i have a project in mind so first this is all uh, this is going to be the mix actually i'm gonna do the yarn first so if you want to cut out and you don't want to see anything else, you can cut out. So for the knitting related stuff, I got, I think I just got a couple of things. So for the Hotel of Bees crochet shawl pattern, these are the three colors that I have picked. There is... Uh, this is all Red Heart Soft, and this is 100% acrylic, and it's worth their weight, and it is super soft, much softer than the Super Saver um, 
and you get how many yards? How many did this? It's a 141 gram ball with 256 yards of yarn in it. And this is the color charcoal. This is the color rose blush. And this is the color off white. So that is what I'm going to make my Hotel of Bees shawl with. And then the next thing I wanted to talk about as far as yarn is concerned is, okay, so I am the worst, and I did not even bring it over here, but I am the worst at uh, crochet alongs. But I am going to uh, try, I'm, a, I'm a, the worst at any kind of along, knit along, crochet along, I'm just a terrible joiner. I never keep up. But I discovered one that I wanted to participate in. And it is for this beautiful, and I'll show you guys. Um, I'll put a link for it down below. But I joined this Facebook group thinking that, uh, I think it was called Hooked on Sunshine. And I thought, and it's, it was crochet alongs. And I thought it was just going to be a page where they shared all different crochet alongs. But this is actually one that turns out that it was dedicated to a very specific designer. And so the crochet alongs are all with her patterns. And they, the one they're doing that starts on Monday is so beautiful. And maybe what I'm going to do is hold on a second. Okay, sorry about that. I just wanted to grab my telephone. And see if I can find... Um the page but they start this crochet along on um on sunday on monday and i wanted to be involved so I, I i'm sure you needed seven different colors of yarn and i'm sure i have seven different colors however <laughs> i wanted to sort of plan it out so i went out and i found yeah it's called hooked on sunshine um Patterns and crochet alongs and this is uh, the designer or the blog is called Hooked on Sunshine and this particular crochet along is for uh, a is for a, a throw a crochet blanket but it's small it looks like it's small and it is called Atlanticus and I can't see if I can get a good picture of that to show you. But that is it. And I don't know if that's showing up or not. But you basically need seven different colors of yarn. And people are doing them in all kinds of, uh, of colors. And people are doing subtle colors, and people are doing bright colors, and um, and I wanted to do mine. And um, some people are doing solid, just one color. And I wanted to do something like, okay, so here's one that is started. That's one member on the on the blog, on the Facebook page. So I wanted to join. And see if I could pull off a crochet along. <laughs> Try to see. See, people are putting up pictures of their choices. And I'll do that later on. But, you know, like that. So, I wanted to join. So, I went to Joanne's today. And I got the yarn for that. So, I have. I got all big twist. 100% acrylic worsted, worsted weight. And in this, I got pinks and purples and blues is what mine is going to be. And this is the color lilac. This is going to be the darkest color in mine. And this one is called medium denim. Light denim. This one is sky blue. 
This one is called Medium Rose. This one is Blush Pink. And I think, oh, I think there's one more pink. And this one is called, is there one more pink? This one is Light Rose. So those are my seven colors that I'm going to be using for my Atlanticus. So I'm supposed to start that on Monday. So whew, I'm ready to go. And then I got a joint. Okay, so then that's all the yarny stuff. Now I got a request um, to make uh, some Harry Potter themed items. And so I got a little bit of fabric for that. Uh, I believe... <laughs> Okay, y'all, I'm going to just confess. I'm not a Harry Potter head. <laughs> I'm not a Harry Potter person. I like the movies, but I don't know everything about it. Like, I don't know which house I'm in. I don't know any of that stuff. But I believe these might be Slytherin. Green and gray, I think. I already have Gryffindor, which is the gold and the gold and maroon, which is Harry's house, if I, if I got that correct. And then I have Hufflepuff, which I think is black and the gold. <clears throat> so I got some things coming with that. Some ideas coming. You guys will see. And then I got this Harry Potter print fabric. You see that? And then this Harry Potter print fabric. Joy has had some really good coupons today, too, because I think I ended up with $13 off of my total by the time they finished adding on those coupons. I love Joanne's because they let you use all the coupons. <laughs> anyway, I also got a little sticker book to use for Sunday school. And that's all the yarny stuff. Then for mixed media, and for, for heat press and vinyl, um, usually when you heat press vinyl in the silhouette, which is right back there, you generally just feed the vinyl in. You don't need a, a mat. But if you have scraps, you kind of need a mat. So I didn't have, I think I gave away my mat in my frenzy of giving away all kinds of stuff. So I bought a new mat. And I got this like a week or so ago. What else did I get? Sorry guys. This is junk. I don't think anything is in there. And then I got, I wanted to try and do some um, encaustic art and a little more mixed media. So I got um, some more um, canvas boards and just a 5x7 because I just want to make small pieces. And then for encaustic, you, you can do it on wood easily. So I got a piece of, <laughs> excuse me, a piece of art and craft plywood to do a little bit of encaustic painting and I will show you that down the line. I wanted to do some embossing on some of my mixed media pieces so I got this Recollections embossing pad and it has clear ink so basically you take that whatever stamp press it in there stamp it on your your item spread embossing powder on there take off the excess and then heat it with a heat gun and you come up with a beautiful image so I got that And I got, oh, for mixed media, these are watercolor crayons. Got that. My recollections. And then I just got a little paint set, uh, acrylic value set there for mixed media. And I wanted a couple of uh, metallic paints, so I got two different silvers and a gold. If you can see that, two different silvers and a gold. And I got this over time. This is what I spend my little allowance on. I don't, I don't buy clothes. <laughs> I'm not buying clothes. I did get some clothes, but I'm not buying any clothes for, until I lose a significant amount of weight and I need the clothes. And then I got this uh, folk art. Um, it is a um, stencil brush. And speaking of stencils, so 
if you, and that stuff all came from Michael's. If you want to get into um, mixed media art, I will tell you that, I will say this about every craft. They can be cost prohibitive, but they don't have to be. You can do almost anything on the cheap and just to get into it and get some enjoyment out of crafting. You don't have to have the highest end of things. And so I just wanted to share, Michael's had this really great sale and I think I did like a separate haul video but I didn't uh, upload it so this is not on sale anymore but they had buy one set of stamps, get a set of stamps free and Recollections had these sets. And this is it's called, um, it just says mixed media stamp and stencil set and it's 15 pieces. So you have in this pack 11 different clear stamps and then underneath, you have uh, four different stencils. So look at that. That's one. I don't know if you can see those. There's another pattern. That's a beautiful pattern to use. And then this final, like almost just like borders that you could use. So seriously, if you want to do mixed media art, these were $12.99, but they were buy one, get one free. So I got a, two of them. And, you know, different patterns, very versatile stamps in the pack, and beautiful um, stencils. And these are like mainstays for mixed media art. And I love mixed media art. Look at that, like a tree. Because you don't have to know how to draw to make something pretty. And I can't draw, so there you go. So you could get that. Even if you didn't get the buy one, get one free. You could get that for $12.99. You get, this is five little boards. And I think this was like $3.99. And then you could grab a set of these paints and a stencil brush. If you don't have a stencil brush, you could use those those triangle, um, these, these uh, makeup sponges to do stenciling. Boom. You get these from the dollar store, a whole bag. So for under $20, you could really get into mixed media art. I mean, there are, don't get me wrong, many, many other things you could be buying that will cost you tons more. But just to get into it and get started it doesn't cost a lot at all so those are those things and then this one was on sale for $2.99 it's a Dilusions um, by uh, Ranger Inc. this is from Diane Reevely I believe yeah so that's that and then some of the printing that you saw that I've shown some of it on Instagram. I'll show you on a finished object at another time. But I wanted to try these uh, jelly uh, print plates in the petites. I have a six by six one, but I wanted to try this one. And it has, I don't think you could tell, but it has a round one, a triangle one, and a square one. And you will see that on an upcoming project. I got that from Amazon. And then to go along with that, I am planning on making some really cool project bags, I think. So I got these fabric paints from Deco Arts, which I ordered from Deco Arts directly. And this is a, a pretty uh, bright yellow color. It's all fabric paint. And this one is Limelight. It's a green glittery one. This one is called Dark Rose. And this one is called Ocean Blue. And then I got some Shimmer Misters from them as well. And these are just acrylic paint misters. And these are also staples in mixed media art. Um, this one is called Primary Yellow. Violet. You can see that. And then Primary Cyan, which is sort of a blue. And I got so many ideas, I just haven't stopped to do the projects, but be looking out for that one. So I think those are 
that's everything that I wanted to share today. That was a lot of stuff. I've gotten it over the last few weeks and just wanted to share that. So the final part of this, which maybe I should have done this a while ago and done the, the haul last, but hopefully you're still here because I'm going to shout out a couple of um, crochet podcasts that I have been enjoying. So the first one I wanted to talk about is called The, Cro the Cozy Crochet Cottage. It's hosted by Hannah. And she has three episodes up. She might have four by now because I did these notes a few days ago. So she might have another one up. Um, she's doing that Hotel of Bees um, shawl as well. And then there's another one um, called Crochet Show and Tell hosted by Megan. And I think Megan might be in, in Indiana. Anyway, go check out their page. I will link them down below. Check them out. Um, Megan has been podcasting since last year sometime, but she does, she does them periodically, so she has about seven, seven episodes. She's also doing the whole Hotel of Bees um, crochet um, shawl, and I think that's what made me want to do it, looking at hers. So, anyway, that's all I have for today. Um, I'm out of breath, talking too much. Hopefully you can hear me. Um, I have this new mic that I, this was, oh, this was part of my Mother's Day gift, too. My husband gave me this because he knows I'm trying to, you know, be consistent with YouTube and um, give better quality videos. So hopefully this worked. And um, yeah, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Thank you for taking your time and spending some of your time with me. This is a long video. Um, <laughs> but. I always enjoy spending time with you guys. Um, thank you for all the support. Again, please, you know, if you like what you see, you can share my video anywhere. You can um, shout me out anywhere. And if you can just please give me a thumbs up and like, subscribe, share, tweet, you know, whatever. Anyway, I think that's all I have for now. So I will see you guys in two weeks. My schedule, I'm going to try to do every other Monday. I'm going to record on the weekends and edit on the weekends and hit upload for Mondays. And, um, yeah, at any rate, until next time, I am asking you guys to enjoy. And I hope I can stop this. <laughs> Keep it crafty. I'll talk to you later.